Hi all, I'm Dan Smegrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, July 1, 2021, Canada Day. And you're watching WGAN-TV live at five. Our guest today from Canada is Chris White, marketing manager from Planetar Inc., the maker of iGuide. And today's topic is deep dive training, iGuide Stitch post-production software for PC and Mac. This is an awesome show. Chris, I'm so excited to have you back on the show. Cool. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be back. Chris, before we do a deep dive into this topic, how about we take a look at an iGuide so that we kind of know where we're headed when you start showing us the post-production process for iGuide. Awesome. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, that way people will know, you know what you get as in a final product, uh, and then we can show them how to get there. Amazing. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if it works. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, good. Okay, so here's an iGuide. Um, so an iGuide is essentially... A, uh, a virtual tour or a 3D tour, but what makes it special is this floor plan over here. So as you can see, there is an integrated floor plan. Uh, it is interactive, you can click on it. So all the little dots you can see here are clickable and they'll take you to different positions in the property. So you can look around. You've obviously got 360 degree visuals. That's how you can look around. You can click and look up and look down and look around and whatever you want. Um, fun fact, if you click the button in the top left-hand corner of the floor plan, you can zoom in on the floor plan. That's actually a new feature. It just got added like, uh, I don't know, last week, something like that. Okay, cool. So we have an interactive map. We yeah. have the 360 tour. Give us kind of just the highlights of the things that we're going to touch today that we're actually going to change in the post-production. Gotcha. So you can uh, configure this eye guide in a lot of different ways. So. The most, uh, I would say, common way to uh, configure this is to turn visuals on and off. So uh, when you're shooting with the um, iGuide camera, the PlanX camera system, you're capturing LiDAR measurements, but you're also capturing 360 degree visuals. So the 360 degree visuals are pretty obvious. You're looking at them right now, but the LiDAR measurements are used to draw the floor plan. So what can happen, and this is a perfect example you see on screen here, is that sometimes you'll have, you know, less than ideal visuals, okay? So if you're a real estate photographer and you've been in a few homes, you'll know that, you know, not every room is pretty. Some of them look like this, <laughs> you know? You don't, you don't need this on your virtual tour. So the most common thing people configure is um, what's seen and what's not seen. So they're gonna turn panos off. Now, the nice thing about this particular setup with the eye guide is that if you turn a pano off, uh, that space still has value outside of just the visuals alone. So it's still on the floor plan and it represents something that people can see, you know, on the floor plan they can interact with. And that also um, contributes to the property data in terms of like room dimensions and square footage. So something nice, uh, something positive, uh, I would say about spaces that are less than marketing worthy, we'll say, um, is that they're still part of the presentation. So you still get some value out of those by measuring them. Um, and they're still featured on the floor plan. But yeah, 99% of the time, what you're gonna do is turn panels on and off, but you can also do all sorts of stuff. You can change room labels. You can add a video. This one doesn't have one, but there would be a tab at the top that says video. You can configure the UI elements to be visible or invisible. You can have the tour start with a shrunken floor plan and have the visuals up larger if you want. Um, and you can basically- And I'm looking for a marketing panel, maybe for a real estate agent. Perhaps this tour doesn't have that. Uh, no, it doesn't actually, it doesn't have branding on it, but I'll get you one that does. I'll, I'll look. Uh, okay. So we'll see how that's done too. So, yeah, so Chris, uh, awesome. For the, for the purpose of, of our, um, our visit today for this deep dive into eye guide stitch, let's assume that I'm a real estate photographer. I'm researching buying an eye guide Planix camera kit, uh, uh, and before I do, I really do want to see the back end of iGuide, the post-production and workflow. And I'm looking for two different workflows, Chris. First is what is the fastest workflow from camera to going live? 
what's the fastest workflow from the post-production standpoint. And then second, uh, since you have probably have done hundreds, if not thousands of eye guides, um, what's the workflow that you recommend taking us through an actual project? Okay. I'm going to answer those questions. You're going to love this. And if, uh, if someone who's you know watching this has been wondering, you know, what, what is it like to, to do this post processing process? I'm going to do exactly what you just said, which is show it start to finish. Um, and then show how easy it can be is in terms of time. If I'm just going to quantify it real quick, you can be in and out of this software, this post-processing part of the whole eye guide creation in like two minutes. Like it could be so fast. It's sometimes it takes longer to boot your computer, but anyway, okay. I'll share my screen and I will show you. Great. Exactly so first up referring. is the eye guide stitch post-production software. Assuming we've already shot the job. How do I get the, the job into, into Stitch and publish it? In, in, in fact, do you want to show us how to install it or talk about that? Uh, I can show you. Actually, yeah, that's a really great point. Let me show you. Can you see my screen right now? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Stitch is actually downloadable by anyone right now. There's actually sample data as well on the website if you wish to download and play with it. If you go to goiguide.com and then go to resources, there's going to be a page that says downloads. If you go there and then you scroll down just a wee bit to where it says Stitch, anyone can download Stitch right now. You can try it out if you want. Um, and, and, and as I recall, there's example data there as well. That's right. There's sample data for you to play with. So, um, so I don't even need to have an iGuide Planix camera kit today in order to play with Stitch. Yeah. There's already sample tour uh, and download the software either for my PC or Mac and, and then... I'm off, off to the races. You got it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And that's Great. what it was for. It was because people had questions. They were like, how does this work? What does it look like? Well, you can try it out for yourself and then I'm going to show you as well. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll just assume that, that we've already gone through that process of downloading the software. Is this a Mac or PC version? Uh, so I'm on a PC. Uh, they're going to be nearly identical, to be honest. Uh, in all likelihood, just FYI for your listeners, they're probably technical. So I'll just say it straight up. I'm working on a 4K monitor right now. So my UI scaling's a little weird. So it probably wouldn't, the icons probably wouldn't look this small on your, your computer if your scaling is good. Um, I'm, I'm editing right now on a big screen television, which is a bit unusual. So <laughs> typically okay. the icons are a little larger. Either way, Mac PC, it looks nearly identical and behaves exactly the same on either one. So when you go collect the data, what you're doing is you're storing that data on the camera. So unlike other systems, it's not on your, it's not on your, you know, smart device, your phone or your tablet or whatever you're using it's on the camera on a USB drive. So if you're a professional photographer, think of it like an SD card, you pull it out of the system and you plug it into your computer, to copy the data off. That's the best way to look at it. Um, when you do that, what you do with it from there is completely up to you. But to just show you an example, I just copied it onto my desktop. You know, I mean, people have all sorts of fancy file systems and shared drives and raids and whatever, but, um, you know, you can get as sophisticated as you like and put it into your workflow, however you okay. want. So I just copy on the I desktop. Can, I can put the data where I want, but all I oh, did yeah. was move it from a thumb drive to my computer before exactly. beginning the, uh, using iGuide stitch. Exactly. That's exactly right. So it's just a folder. That's it. So I'm going to click it, uh, from stitch, sorry to, to just back up a touch. This is what Stitch looks like. It's a little boring initially um, because there's nothing here to look at. But uh, if I click the open button and then I click a folder from the camera, what will happen is that it will load the data in Stitch and now I can see some stuff. Um, so let's talk about the first workflow, the easy one. The easy one, the fast one, uh, is uh, pretty much me ignoring all this stuff. I don't look at the data. I don't look at the images. I don't click on anything, although I just did. Um, all I do, there's only one thing I have to do, and that's click on the floor, and I have to choose a grade level. Now, this is only if I didn't select it when I was shooting, um, but this is a requirement. So there's a very good reason for this. So part of the core of the iGUIDE system is um, measurement and, and determining square footage. So the people who draw the floor plans have no idea if something's above or below the ground. <laughs> they can guess but uh, they don't like guessing. So you have to specify. Now, if you've done it on site, you don't have to worry about it, but above or below grade means above ground or below ground, because in most places in North America, when square footage is reported for like a property, um, below grade is not included and above grade is. You, I'll show you this later, you can configure it, but um, that's something that's required. 
And you change that by just clicking on the floor and choosing one. Again, like this is just if you haven't done it on site. Um, but when you click on a floor, you get some options. So if that's configured, all I have to do, this is the fast workflow, is click on the little globe button up here. And it's going to, um, I'm just going to change one setting here. There we go. It's going to give me warning messages if there are any, but there shouldn't be. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to click the little globe button and it's going to say, it's going to give me these little warnings here and I'm going to click ignore. So these warnings are, are in the fast workflow. You, you don't need to worry about them. They're not important. All this stuff can be changed later. I click ignore and it's going to start working. Now, hopefully my feed still works while this is happening. Can you still hear me talking? Yes. Okay. Sometimes it takes advantage of the CPU cores and it, it can mess with video calls. So that's good. <laughs> Either way, what it's doing right now is it automatically is exporting all the data. Um, and what I mean by that is it's making, you know, 360 degree images if there aren't any, and it's auto adjusting all the exposures and white balances and everything. So essentially, if I just click that button, it does everything for me and it spews out an output. So think of this in terms of um, like a Lightroom workflow, if you've ever used Lightroom. Lightroom doesn't do anything until you tell it to, you know, if you select a few images and you say, export these as JPEGs. It goes, okay, and it makes JPEGs. This is the same thing. If you click that export button, you say export, it sends, it takes all the data and makes a file for you. So and, it doesn't and is send it going to anymore. iGUIDE when it does that export or is it just Not, going to my, my desktop? It just goes right onto your desktop. It doesn't go anywhere. So this is a very comfortable workflow. So what I mean by that is that if it's like 3 a.m. and you shot like five houses and when you're doing this process, you make a mistake, it doesn't send it to anybody. <laughs> It just puts it on your desktop. And if you realize, oh, whoops, I messed up. No big deal, you can go back. So once you've exported, it creates a little summary. Um, again, you can ignore this and stitch, uh, you're done, that's it. So, so I'll recap the fast workflow. Open the folder, wait like, I don't know, 30 seconds for it to process all the images. Click the uh, globe button, that's the export button. Click any button that says ignore or okay or whatever. And then basically however long it t takes to process is how long it takes to export. And then you're done in Stitch. That's how fast Okay, well, you're, you're done with Stitch. Uh, so where, what do I do with that file that I've just created? Excellent question. So you have to send it to somebody for anything to happen. So think of this at like um, a separate process for ordering. So if I want something, I have to go fill out a form to essentially order it. Cause this, this is a transaction. You know, you're kind of paying for something here. So and with an iGUIDE, um, what you're paying for is very like obvious. You know, you send the data in and then drafts people draw the, like the floor plans for you. So okay, so, but you where, know, where do I go to place this order? So I, I don't question. yet have it, an iGUIDE account. So uh, uh, maybe take us through that. How do I set up an iGUIDE account and then right. actually place an order. And I, I know we're kind of jumping out of Stitch at this point, yeah, but that's I, okay. I this think for the purposes me. of, you know, hey, I okay, I, I get it, that was easy. Well, what's the next step of publishing my iGUIDE? I'd still <laughs> like to, to see that upload uh, step. Right, so um, when you buy an iGUIDE camera, we make an account for you. So you can't make one ahead of time, unfortunately. It would be nice if you could. Maybe that'll come in the future. Um, so I'll show you what the process would look like um, but this is something you can't try yourself. So you can absolutely go get Stitch and play with sample data, but this process, you'll have to wait until you actually buy a camera. Which, to, which is fine. I, I'm going to assume that I buy a camera that uh, Planetar creates an iGUIDE account for me, exactly. probably sends me a link to say, go set up your account here. Uh, and let's now assume that I've done that. Perhaps we could do that with your account or your test account. Uh, yeah, we're going to do it with this one right here. You got it. Okay. So imagine uh, that you've, you've, you know, shot your first eye guide, we'll say, and now you want to, you know, submit it because you want to order an eye guide. What you would do is you would log into the eye guide portal, which is the very screen you're looking at right now. The eye guide portal, um, like it's going to show a bunch of stuff here. Obviously, these houses aren't. Um, I, I'm not. I don't think I'm in the right spot. I'm staring at a screen that has uh, the stitch. Oh, because I didn't. Okay, hold on. Let me let me switch it over. Here's the one. Does that look more like uh, yes UI? There we go. Okay, so this is the eye guide portal. <laughs> okay, and, and so, and so at the top that's is a manage dot your 
iGuide.com. Correct. Yeah. Um, but I can't get there unless I have a, a uh, an iGuide account, and that's actually set up by iGuide when I buy the iGuide Planix camera kit. You got it. Now, fun fact. <laughs> These are always super fun. You can go to manage.youriguide.com and you can totally create an account. Anyone can. If you do that, however, you won't have anything to, to work with or do anything with because you don't have any data and you won't have this button at the top. So there's a reason for that. It's really interesting. So we have different types of accounts. Some are accounts for creators and some are accounts for more like managers or editors. So an editor would be someone who you would give access to your iGuides to so that they could make the very changes that I'm going to show you later. And it's very common to have a brokerage or team or they've got an administrative person and they don't want to like call you to change the floor plan label. They just want to do it themselves. So if you want, you can give them access and they can go in and change it okay. all on their own so, if you like. Uh, got it. So now how do we, how do we, so assuming that I have the, the iGuide account, uh, I've logged in. Uh, how do I upload that file that you just created in iGuide Stitch? Excellent question. So you click the button at the top that says create iGuide. You're going to get the order form, uh, which I referred to earlier. Um, there are some options you can configure. These are all free. You don't need to do anything. You can just leave them checked. Okay, so um, that, but you went went a little bit fast, and the print's a little bit soft, uh, uh, small. So the add-ons include adding Google Street View, mm -hmm. adding Floor Planner. Uh, those are two third-party services, and advanced measurement. I'm not sure what that is. Right. So uh, just off the top, those are all free. None of them cost money. Um, why you would uncheck them, I have no idea. <laughs> but they're all there, uh, checked by default because they're free. But Street View is exactly what it sounds like. You can. Um, export things to Street View. Um, when you are doing that, you typically don't do that for regular residential properties, but it's very common for people to, to you know, every so often shoot a business with the intention of exporting to Street View. So that's that's an option. You can do that. Floor planners, yes, you're right. Third-party service. Um, that allows you to customize your floor plans, do some 3D renders. There's all sorts of fun stuff. That's not a, really a conversation for today so much, but again, free, you can play with it for free. It's awesome. Advanced measurements is a feature in the iGuides that allows you to measure in 3D space. Um, it's really not for residential real estate. Like there's nothing wrong with using it in that scenario, but that's really more facility management or um, AEC or you know insurance restoration, that kind of stuff. Cause those are scenarios where you need to figure out like how long a pipe run is or like how big a platform is to put a piece of equipment on or something okay. like that. Uh, but Got anyway, it. Got it. Uh, uh, paid add-ons. Yeah. The only one there is VR. Now I don't know if anyone still uses VR, but it is still there. And the experience is actually quite cool. So <laughs> if you have someone interested in VR, you can totally add it in. There are actually two iGuide packages. One is standard and the other is premium and they're accessed from this drop down up here. So the only difference between the two is that premium eye guides have fancier floor plans. So they have um, toilets, fixtures, sinks, things like that, appliances, um, and they have VR. So if you really want to add VR to a standard eye guide, you can totally do that. That's an option. Could you just toggle for a second on standard just to see yep. that? So, so you'll see there's a few options here. The only ones that are relevant to this conversation are really standard and premium. Standard and premium. Okay. Yep. So, and then uh, how do I upload it? Good question. So there's a few steps you have to, okay. um, well, there's one step you have to do before you upload it, and that's add an address. So you basically have to give this iGuide a name before you send data because we need to know what it is. Um, but it's exactly what it sounds like. You just put an address. So here, I'll just make a fake one. Um, Typically what happens is that it's just an auto-complete through Google. So you start putting the address in and it'll just auto-complete it for you. Um, so I've done it, that's it. And then what I do is I go to the bottom. So I'm skipping all this stuff, don't need any of it. You can you can do it if you want, but we're gonna skip it because this is well, Let's way. just see what, what it is though. So we'll yeah, go sure. slowly, add agent branding. Okay, so that's, and that's where you could go off and create kind of a, banner yeah, with their so, photo and their contact info. So I'll try to find one for you real quick. Okay. Uh, and ju just to be clear where you've checked the Google box, uh, <laughs> I want to be careful we're not submitting something to Google by accident. That's a very data. common question. Yeah. So you won't be. The uh, checkbox at the top is meant to enable Google. Um, and in order to send it to Google, you'd have to manually go send it later. 
there's a whole separate UI for that where you basically okay. configure the tour and then send what you specifically want to send. Awesome. Um, Maybe we'll do a different show on that. That's that's cool. Yeah, that's um, a whole other topic of discussion. It's fascinating. That, that, that's awesome. Okay. So uh, it looks like you already have a banner that's been made up specifically for you. Yeah, look at that handsome guy. Uh, yeah. So a banner is exactly what it sounds like. It's agent or branding for whoever you're creating the tour for. It doesn't have to be an agent. Okay. But it's just name, contact information, um, typically a headshot and a logo. This is highly customizable. It's one of the advantages of the iGuide in general is that you can, you can brand the heck out of it. Um, so you can do custom images. You can have, um, I mean, whatever the limits are of your own creativity. Okay. Really. But this, this is critical, the branding. It's kind of funny. People overlook it a lot. But when you have a tour that is part of a real estate listing, if people can't connect to the person who's listing that is then well the whole system's kind of broken right so branding I, I, is actually i got, I got it pretty let, important let, you know, let's but... keep moving because i know we've got a lot to cover on the show today oh so true so okay I just I, all i want to know is i can add an agent branding boom got done it. okay got um, it. there's one other thing in here though so iGuide has uh automatic delivery should you want it this is a kind of a weirdly overlooked thing so whoever's on the banner i can have um that person have the i got automatically sent to them when it's done yeah, I don't need to send it myself, but that's just a checkbox. It's easy. Uh, people, I mentioned earlier, there were editors and, um, you know, there's different roles here. So I can assign other people access to this eye guide uh, should I wish to write from here. So if I've got an agent and I know, oh, they're going to want in on this, I can give them access right here and then they can go in and edit things and make some changes. Uh, and then at the bottom, I can upload data. So part of the eye guide um, experience is adding additional information in. Uh, the form of, say, photos or video or other things like a property description. So there's two upload boxes here. Um, there's one at the bottom for images, and then you can skip this completely if you don't want to do it. But if I had gone to a sh uh, property and shot still images, I would, I would like upload them as well, you okay. know, because I want them to be included awesome. in the gallery. But we can skip that for now. So we're like, looking for a file called Stitch Tar. You got it. That's right. So mine's on my desktop. So all I did, I probably was too fast. I clicked on the dotted box and then I clicked on my, my desktop and there's only one folder on there because I'm a tidy guy apparently. Uh, and when I go in here, there's an export folder and then I hope you guys can see this. And then there's a, like a tar file, which is just kind of like a zip file that Max used. It's, um, okay, that, always that, has that's, the that, that's super address. clear. Okay, so then you hit open, yep. then. Okay, so here's, here's something that's fascinating. So then, it shows you what you just attempted to upload, <laughs> and but it doesn't do anything. So you might think to yourself, wait a minute, why is that? Why doesn't it just upload it? There's a very good reason. So what we've noticed uh, over you know, the course of seven or eight years of doing this is that people often go out and they shoot at, we'll say 9 a.m., they shoot another house at noon and they shoot another house at three. And by the time they're uploading this data, maybe it's, maybe it's midnight, you know? maybe you had a really full day it's very easy to make a mistake and upload the wrong data to the wrong house and to, to make an error. So this is meant to protect you and to show you, look, you chose 301 King Street, you're uploading, well, in theory, it would be 301 King Street. <laughs> and then it tells you the size for reference. So we have people in rural communities where their internet's not fabulous. So if you know how big it is, you can kind of ballpark approximately how long it's gonna take you. Yeah, it's just a convenience thing. And then it tells you how many pandas there are just for fun. Okay. Um, you can also delete the file if you chose the wrong one. So that's why that button's there. Okay. But supposing that you got the right one, you just click the button at the bottom and you wait and it just okay. uploads the data. Well, and where you. do I add my video? Ah, oh, good question. So we, we skipped it, um, but I'll go back and I'll show you. Actually, maybe I can click on it. That was under advanced oh, options. Okay. Correct. So advanced options, the very first thing under here is video because that's the number one advanced thing people are going to change. Um, the advanced, uh, or sorry, the um, video is fascinating in that there's two versions. So iGuide is really, really well optimized for um, real estate. So it's got two different videos that you can add, one branded and one unbranded. The branded one obviously has agent branding. Okay. So that will not appear on the right. version of the tour that you place on MLS, uh, so on the local listing service. So you've got a separate one, separate video link for the unbranded version. Uh, so should you wish to create a completely separate video with no branding, you can still take advantage of that on MLSs. It would okay. be a real shame often if you, especially if you do your own video, it's a real shame if you create this whole video and then the agent can't use it, you know? <laughs> so if you can create yeah, we're, we're, we're clear on that. Re reminder, we're, let's assume that uh, uh, I'm a professional real estate photographer. 
And uh, I, I'm, I'm already with you on this. We, we can move through it quickly, but I do want to know what features uh, were under that advanced setting. Yep. So in addition to the video, you've got, you can change the URL, you can change the start options, units like metric or imperial. Um, you can configure the measurements. Um, often people have a specific thing that they want to change every time. So you can actually set these up as default for your account as well. You don't even Chris, need the to print's super the small. How about, how about just reading off the different options? Okay. They're very exciting. Um, hide room areas. That hides the, some of the areas. Uh, hide the on-screen measure feature, if you want to hide that. Um, actually, this is a good one. Include below grade in total area. So you're going to have the total square footage of the house. It's a really important number. In some areas, it's everything, below grade, above grade, everything. In some areas, it's not. So you can configure this tour to be exactly what your client wants. And there's a small amount of learning that you need to do to figure out what it is your client wants. But that has nothing to do with the eye guide so much as it has to do with understanding your client's needs, right? Okay. So I'll, I'll figure it, the, the print's pretty big at this moment. So we'll, we'll figure somebody wants to just the, watch the recording, stop the screen. They can read yeah, they what can the other it. options are. <laughs> so I, 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 that sounded super important that you just went by, which is I actually could name the, the URL. It looked like the default yeah. setting was actually the property address with underscores. But Correct, I could yeah. put something super simple in there, like yeah. 301 underscore king. Uh, most 301 of the time, what king. people do with that, I mean, yeah, you can make it whatever you like, really. The only problem is if you've already got one, it's you're going to get a duplicate. So I've already done 301 king. So it gets these weird characters at the front. Yes. Most of the time, people totally ignore this because it's not super relevant. But every so often, you'll do an eye guide for someone like a builder. And the URL does matter. And they want like something like simple homes. And so you can change it to a simple set of words. 100%. Okay. Yeah, oh, easy. That, that's awesome. Okay. I can control the URL. And uh, what else we got in here? Um, so there's a few other options. We can go into them later. They're not super exciting, okay. but basically you're done. That's it. Okay. You so click a button, it, says, it uploads. create eye guide and upload. Have I already done that? Oh, we have indeed. You can see it says hundred percent. So if we had just stuck on this particular part of the screen, you would have seen there's a little progress meter and it does little yes. check marks one by one. And then the hundred percent, sorry, the progress bar will gradually go up to hundred percent as the file is completed okay. uploading. So when do I get my floor plans? When do I get my eye guide? It's a good question. So, um, we guarantee that you will get your tour and your floor plans and everything the following day. So that's a vague way of saying, if you upload it on a Tuesday, you're going to get it on a Wednesday, but often it's significantly it, it's faster. It's 5.30 Eastern time now. If I uploaded it now and I get up at eight in the morning in, on the East Coast, is there a good chance it's going to be ready for me? There is. Um, it's a little bit tricky to explain, but I'll put it like this. We have something in place called continuous delivery, which just means that uh, we get it done as soon as we can get it done. <laughs> so that the unfortunate thing about that, if I'm being honest, you know, I'm not in sales. I'm allowed to be honest. Um, the uh, there are differences in in activity and load based on season or just random, you know. So we uh, the drafting team, I should say, might have to process. 50 eye guides one day and then 5,000 the next. There's what, no way. So what, what's the, what's the commitment level? Is it 24 hours, no longer than 24 hours? Right. It is following day. Following so it's, day. It's not 24 hours. It's not like, you know, business days or anything. Ah, it's, it's, it's following day. So even if I uploaded at 6 AM this morning, it still could be 11 PM tomorrow. It could which... be. Now, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, it's a bit weird. So it's actually prior to a very hard deadline of 7 a.m. So if you uploaded it today at 6 a.m., you actually would get it back today. Okay, good Just to, to know. make things super confusing. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> I, uh, I'll, I'll defer to uh, our viewers to uh, pursue that with an, an eye guide sales team person if, well, uh, if that's yeah. super important. Super important to, to ask a deeper questions because today 100%. was really about eye guide stitch uploading and I and I diverted you. I apologize, but I really did want to see the the back end. Well, it's a good question. I mean, that's actual yeah. upload. Let's go if you don't mind. Let's go back to eye guide stitch, the post production software PC right, and Mac there. for eye guide. And the the first thing that you showed us was here's the super fast under two minutes to move the data from the thumb drive to your computer, in, import it into Stitch, then export it, and then upload it to uh, iGUIDE. 
that that was a super simple workflow. Yeah, all in all, we're talking like you know five six minutes to go from the camera to uploaded. You're done. Okay, that and that's awesome. Uh, the, the second workflow I'd like to see, and, and again, I want to take advantage of your expertise as a photographer that literally has done hundreds, if not thousands of eye guides, what is really a typical workflow that you would recommend? And let's maybe begin with, okay, you, the, the files are now on your desktop. Now what? So that is a, that's an excellent way to put it. So and, I'm going to be honest. We're probably looking at the wrong screen. We're back to looking at the iGUIDE upload screen. We really yeah, here. Go well, back to Let's literally go from scratch, okay? So I'm going to be honest. I am super duper lazy. And I don't want to do even one tiny bit of extra work uh, more than I have to. So, when, okay, so my but workflow- I can't see I'm... your screen, Chris. Oh, so oops, I, I need help there. I'm... <laughs> Hold on. Tell you what, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing and then let you share again so yeah, that we perfect. can see your your uh, eye guide stitch screen. Okay, how about now? Okay. Okay. Uh, good. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, so let's so, start from scratch. What's the recommended workflow uh, by pro professional real estate photographer and marketing manager at Planetar Eye Guide, the makers of Eye Guide, Chris White? Chris's pro level workflow. Okay, let's do it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the data into Stitch, just as you saw in the previous example. Uh, and then first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my first panorama over here in this, this list. So, you know, you have a big list of all the work you've done for the, the property, easy. And then I'm gonna use my keyboard and I'm gonna cycle through it like this. So I, I hope this is coming across. You can see them yes. changing the images. So what this does for me is it allows me to scan all of my work real quick, just, just gonna go through the whole property real fast and look at the images. So what I'm looking for is anything out of the ordinary. So this software is really, really good at adjusting the images, making them look good. Um, you know, uh, There's nothing I can do about the property in a lot of cases, but sometimes the images will have flaws. They'll be too bright or too dark or whatever. So I'm, all I'm doing is just going through the whole, whole list, looking for anything that's a little off. So if I find something, I'm gonna intervene. If I'm not, then I'm not gonna do anything. So it's just like when you're shooting with any automatic camera system, you let the camera do the heavy lifting. And then if it screws up, okay, you have to manually intervene. So that's fine. I'm, I'm going to ask you for exceptions and tips and there you go. things that's what to I'm gonna know show you right now. and shortcuts. But at the moment, I really do want to just go through your workflow uh, without any diversions of, of sidecars, side tours. What, what's your workflow? Yep. So that's everything the first is gonna... going reasonably well. That's what right. Is yeah. It that you're doing. So everything checks out. Okay. We're good. I'm going to go to my floors. I'm going to change the above and below grades so that they're correct. If I haven't put them in at the property, sometimes I forget. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to click on the export button and I'm going to see some issues here. So I'm going to, for me, I, I have to look at those. So I'm, I'm going to look at them and I'm going to say, okay, so I've got um, the wall thickness is a bit off and I've got some, some other issues. So there are two panoramas I, here I, that I'm are sorry, too close to it went together. a little bit fast for me. How did oh. you know there were issues? Right. So if you click export, what happens is that a screen comes up. Oh, maybe you can't see it because I can't show it. I can see screen the share. popover. I can oh, can you? Okay, perfect. Popover. Just small, so, that's all. So the software is very much designed like the iGUIDE portal. It's meant to warn you whenever there's an issue. So it's identified a couple for me. I've got panoramas too close together. And they're highlighted here. I hope you can see this, the two yellow sort of things. Yes. Um, so what I want to do now is I'm going to go through here again, and I'm going to turn off anything I think is ugly. So here's an example. Here's a closet. I don't want to see that. So I don't want people on the tour to see that. Why'd you shoot the closet if you're not ah, going to use it? Good question. So why would you shoot something if you're not going to use it? So I, I mentioned it earlier. Sometimes you want to measure something. You want it to appear on the floor plan, but you don't want people to necessarily Great. see it. Great. Noted. To totally um, makes sense. Okay. What you show and what you don't show is up to you and your client. So for some people, a messy bedroom is fine. They don't care. Maybe it's a student I, I, rental. I, I, I'm with it. you. Okay. So you've highlighted that panorama yep. and then there's a feature that says hide in eye guide. You got it. So when I do that, basically I've said to the software, hey, turn this off. So in the quick version... I can do that later. I don't need to do it here, right? I, you know, I can, I can worry about that later. But here I'm like, well, I've got time and I don't, I don't want to go back later to be honest. So I just want to get it done now. So I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to, I'm going to look for anything that 
Yeah, okay, there you go. There's another one. So I'm going to disable that one. Fun fact, if you hit the middle mouse button on your mouse, if you're using a PC or a Mac with a mouse, uh, it disables it real quick. You don't have to use the little menu there. Oh, that's a pretty one. Let me get rid of that. So I'm going to go through here. There's another closet. Uh, oh, that's a bathroom. Okay. Okay. Anyway, good enough. There you go. We've gone through. We've disabled everything. We're good to go. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, click on the export button, and um, I'm just going to confirm that wall thickness actually real quick. No, it's fine. Okay, so uh, that's it. I'm done. That's Whoa, that's my. You went a little fast for me. How how, oh. how did you know that the the thickness of the wall was okay? All right. Well, that's a good question. So it's going to depend on your area. So people calculate wall thicknesses in different ways. So the wall thickness is really important. Basically, it's the thickness of the wall as measured by the photographer on site using a tape measure or a ruler. Um, basically, if you stand in a doorway and you look at the exterior wall of the, the house like edge on and you were to measure that, that's the wall thickness. And the reason that you want to put that in, it sounds complicated, but it takes like one second to get. The reason that you want that is that allows the eye guide to contain what's called the gross floor area or exterior area which is a fancy way of saying the whole footprint of the house, as in the interior measurements, plus the area occupied by the exterior walls. In most places in North America, that's what agents want to list with, um, the, that gross floor area. So um, we allow you to measure that if you want to. Um, so I and, literally just go to the door jam. <laughs> yeah, you just do front, like that with the tape measure. And, and the tape measure and yep. boom. And then Put it turns out it's likely to be standard in, in my area. It, it really, it varies wildly from place to place. So I used to live in an area with triple brick homes. So the, the walls were like 11 inches thick. Got Most so houses I, two by four confused. stucco. You know. if, if we go back to the little mini map there, I thought one of the error messages that you got was some scans were too close together, but Correct. I didn't see how you fixed that. Oh, right. That's okay. So that's what we were supposed to talk about. So let's go back there. So if you look, we've got, two different scans, one that we want and one that we don't. It's very common to overshoot with an eye guide camera. You know, you go into a space, you shoot a bathroom and then you realize, oh my gosh, there's shampoo I, everywhere. I, and you I, move I got stuff. it. I'm a professional real estate photographer. I, uh, I've studied virtual tours. Maybe I'm using a different platform. So I immediately get it, but how do I get rid of that extra scan? Right. How do I you, hide it? You disable it. So you do how that, do that thing we talked about. To disable so, it. How do I know which is which? Ah, right. So um, there's lots of different ways. One way to select it would be to just like mouse down until you, you get it. Now I'll, I'll show you this as clearly as I can. Can you see that this is green? Yes. So that is the highlighted scan. So this, this circle that's green, uh -huh. that's, that's the one I've selected essentially in the list here. Okay. So if I want to turn that off, I, I would right click and choose hide an eye guide and it would turn that particular one off. Um, so when you have this scenario where you okay, have more than one scan. But it's actually the one spot, in the door jam that I wanna get rid of. So how do I find the door jam scan? Right, well, I already found that. I just clicked on the first one and it, it just showed it okay. initially. And then I, I hit it already. I'm too fast. It's Chris that, Pro that, level. That's okay. You, you fast. did a mouse click to, to do that. Yeah. And so that mouse click actually called up a menu and then selected hide scan. Yep. You got it. So, okay. So are you, are you done now and you're ready to export? Yeah. So, so this, this workflow is almost identical to the super fast workflow. Well, yeah, pretty much. So if there, if there are no hiccups, then there's nothing to do. Do you know what I mean? If everything went smoothly, um, it's very common to have um, this be a real world scenario where I load up the data, I look through everything, it all checks out. I turn the panels off. I don't want people to see, export, done. Okay, um, so re just remind me where I, I, I'm done. Where am I gonna export? I'm looking for an icon that's of a globe. Yep, you got I'll it. Select that globe. So can you go ahead and select that? Mm -hmm. And then you've eliminated, looks like you've eliminated your error messages. Correct, yep. So there's only one left. And so I'm going to ignore this one because um, it's still acceptable. So this is a message that's meant to protect you. So let's suppose that you were to enter a number that doesn't make sense. You're tired on site. You accidentally put yes. in one inch for the wall thickness. It's going to say, hey, are you, are you sure about that? Because that affects the square footage of the property. Um, so you don't want to misrepresent the house by saying the house is too small. So it just it just warns you. You can just click ignore okay. and move on so if you realize. Go, okay, go, go slow. Go slow here. So if you hit ignore, will that export the file? Yep. Okay, so let's not do that. We've seen how to do that already. That's great. Um, 
So I, I think at this point, uh, there's, there's probably, I'm imagining 10 things that are super important as a just in case. I, I mean, I, let me start asking just a couple. So uh, uh, it didn't look like you set the first image of the tour. Why was right. that? Because you don't have to. So which image is the first image in the tour? Right. So if you want to set it, and if you choose, if you, okay, basically, let's suppose for a moment that this particular panel, it, that's the one. We're like, yes. we want people to see this first. If you right click it and you, you can see the little menu that comes up, there's a set initial pano option. Yes. And it will set the initial one, but you can okay. always set it later. Which, which one was the default setting without setting that? Right. So if you don't set it, it'll get chosen for you. It'll get chosen for you. It's not necessarily the first one. So in, uh, no, not necessarily. So in, um, in a perfect world, most of the time what happens is that when you go into a property, you just, you just shoot it in order. You know, you wouldn't go out of your way to be yes. um, leapfrogging so over the does, property. Does iGuide take the first shot, assuming that that was the first one I shot because it is where I want the tour to begin? Is yeah, that they may, I yeah, probably. Unless it's really bizarre, like um, obviously um, way out of whack. Um, Okay, so uh, so the, the short answer here is I, I really do care about what the start image is. So I wanna be able to select that, I highlight it, it brings up a pop-up menu and I s set that as my first image. You got it. I, I noticed that there was nothing, you haven't talked at, at all about um, when I enter a 360, what the, what the view is that I see first. So is, is that a function of how I use the iGuide Planix camera kit or post-production or a combination of both? Right. So it's both. Um, with a, a good workflow where you are operating the camera correctly, you shouldn't have to configure um, the start positions ever because the first thing that people will see, the start position, will be the center of the lens on the opposing side of the camera. It's just like if you were to shoot with like well, a- Well, the, the camera is 360. So what's what's the, what I don't understand. Well, so that's a really great point. So when you're referring to the front or the back of a, a 360 degree camera, there's no way to, there's two lenses. So which one is it, right? So the way we you know, define, or way we've chosen to define what's the front, what's the back is that the side with the view screen is the back because in a typical DSLR, the screen is on the back. So when we refer to the front, I mean, you can call it whatever you want, but when we refer to the front, we refer to the opposing side without okay. a view screen on it. Totally makes the, sense. The I, one, I, one. I got it. So as long as I'm, I, I get it that when I shoot and I face the front of the camera towards what I want people to see, then I've saved a workflow on the back end of having to manually set that. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. So, okay. and there's a now, lot of things. Now, like as that, soon as but... I've said that, Chris, I, I know, you know, using a Ricoh Theta Z1, uh, there's going to be times where I'm actually not going to want to face it a certain way because of lighting. Yeah. And I need to kind of have half the lighting be this lens and half the lighting be this lens. Uh, so now I know I'm going to have to set uh, the view for that 360 and post. Uh, within the iGuide Stitch so software. So uh, how do I do that? Right, easily done. So you, you, you know, you select your, your pano there on the left and then you click the button at the top that looks like a weird, you know, sort of creepy looking blue Pac-Man. It's meant to, be, um, meant to be a circle representing 360 degrees with a yes. 90 degree chunk out of it. And then what you do is you hover your mouse over the image and you see, I don't know if you can see the white box that's following it. Yes. So wherever I click is now the first thing that people will see. And that's contained within the blue box that gets set. So if I decide, okay, that TV, that's the money shot. I can click with the box surrounding it. And that has now been selected within that blue box as the very first thing that people will see the initial pano direction. I'm sorry, how did I select it? Did I click someplace? Yep. So left click with the mouse anywhere on the image and it will move that blue box. Okay. Uh, okay, got it. Now, uh, I uh, on, on the eye guide where I want to see, I want to go to the kitchen, bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three, master bedroom, master bath. How, how do I communicate that 
uh, for the floor plan creators, the, the people on the back end at iGUIDE, so that they label the floor plans with the names that I want. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. So where do I do that? So you never have to do that. So they'll label everything for you. So the yeah, dress people I, are I live in Atlanta and something is a sunroom <laughs> that in yeah. Canada you might call a living room. So I need to be really clear so that you, uh, presumably your your post production floor planners are in Canada. Yeah, well, it's a, you're right. It's going to happen from time to time where they're okay, going to choose so something for I, I really need you're not to lie. label something a sunroom or a game room or a carport, not a garage, not a living room, not a playroom. Yeah, so there's a button up here that looks like a notepad, and it's for exactly what you, you just asked for. I don't you, see it. So up here on the toolbar, it says add notes. Toolbar, okay. So if I click that icon and I double click anywhere on the floor or on the data there, yeah, I can add... Um, I can add a note. So if I write the word for the room there, the drafts people will read it and then they will name the room. What, what is a conservatory? It's like a British like sunroom. I picked a weird one. So what typically happens on site, right? From my experience anyway, is that you have an agent ask you, they're like, hey, can you call this the some weird room you've never heard of? And you're like, yeah, okay, sure. So the nice thing is you can actually, when you're shooting, you can put that data in and it will appear here in the notes. So you can actually see what you've you've been asked. Okay, to name so it. these notes are, are specifically for the people at iGUIDE that actually draft the yeah. floor plans. So they put the correct name or the name that you want on that room. You got it. That's okay. exactly what they're but for. But I notice on the left side, the numbers are not changing. Uh, correct. So the numbers are there for reference. Now you can technically change those should you wish to. Um, and that was the old way that we used to do it is that you would relabel the panos um, with that name. And there's nothing wrong. You can still, that functionality is still there if you really wanted to use it. But this is sort of the newer way. You actually put a label directly on the data and it's it's clear to everybody that, you know, that you want this called the carport, you know. Now okay, or, I, I, I get it. Now, when I was on site, let's assume that I shot a big house, but on that property, they had a barn and that was not contiguous space. So, but I shot both spaces. Um, I, where did it end? Did I create two eye guides when I shot it with the eye guide Planix camera kit, or did I shoot both spaces within the same space? But how did I, how did I, how did I do that? And then what does it look like on this end? And then presumably I got to fix something because it's two standalone buildings. Right. Uh, so a yeah. messy enough problem to help me solve. Absolutely. So th this is a very common have this scenario, you know, you've got a barn or a garage or an, some other structure on the property. So you have the, the choice with iGUIDE to either have it drafted or not. So drafting like an 8,000 square foot barn might make no sense. So <laughs> that scenario, you don't want to have to pay for that. Um, so what you could do uh, is you could take that data and um, ha not have it drafted. Essentially, you can have it be a separate floor and that floor will appear as a series of panos. But let's suppose for a moment that you um, want that space to be included in an eye guide as a, a something that's drafted. You would treat that as a separate floor. So you can see here we have over on the left in our, our list, we have main floor and then we have basement. So when I was shooting, I, I'd have an, an additional floor and it would be called like barn or something. So that I can name. Exactly, you can rename anything in this list by right clicking and choosing rename. So, it, but you could name it on, on site as well. You'd probably name it barn to be honest, if you were there. Mm -hmm. um, if you forgot or you messed it up, that's no okay. Problem barn. Um, and then what you would do is you would choose um, to align, you know, or sorry, align to, to treat it just as you would a regular floor, but because it's in a separate building, you, you've got some extra options. So if you right click on the, um, sorry, on the very top, that's what we call the project name. Yeah. You can choose to add a building. So if you add a building, this is supposing you didn't do it on site, by the way, um, you can then rename that building to be barn. And then you can click and drag um, floors from one uh, property to, or sorry, from one structure to another, essentially. So I've moved the, so you can see this says main building, hopefully. It's really small, probably. Um, I've moved the main floor of the main building to the barn. I mean, that's not, doesn't make sense, but if I had a barn, I would have moved it instead. Mm -hmm. um, so here's the nice thing, real world scenario. You go to a property and it's like a split level house. And it's one of those weird ones that has like 
six different levels and you have no idea what the floors are. So you don't know what you're doing and you're like, I don't, is this the first floor? Am I on the third floor? What is this? So what you can do here is yeah, in this scenario is just not really worry about it when you're shooting. You go and you shoot it and you just guess. You think, okay, this is probably the second floor and you shoot all your panoramas. And when you bring it into Stitch, you have the ability to create floors. So I'll show you if I right click on the main building, I can make a floor just like I did when I made a building and I can move panoramas by clicking and dragging them from one floor to another. So just as I can move a floor from a building to another building, I can also move panos from one floor to another. I can also change the order. I've got a lot of flexibility here. So, okay. so for, for clarification, if I was shooting a main house and a barn, uh, I might be calling the main house, main house, yep. and I might have floors, one floor, two floor, three. Yeah. And then I got this barn, which I'll just call floor four. And when I get into stitch, that's when I'm going to say add building and then move that fourth floor, which is really the barn to this new label called barn. And I'm going to imagine on the new label barn, I'm going to put a note to the drafter to say, I don't, I don't want the measurements for the barn. Yeah, and precisely. So you, you have, uh, again, quite a few options, but the one that most people use is that they just turn the laser off when they shoot it. So they just don't measure it at all, or they don't align the data in any way. They just, ah, and then um, you don't have to worry about the, the big, okay, so the camera is shooting the 360 panorama plus the LIDAR scan data. And if I really don't want any measurements done, I can just turn the data off. But if I yep. change my mind later, uh, that maybe I want to keep that option in case the real estate agent comes back and says, hey, could you draw us a floor plan for that barn? So maybe I really do want to have the, the LIDAR data, but I'm going to ask the drafter not to include it. So that's that right. Arch for it. You okay. got it. You, I got nail it right on the head. Often it's better to have the data because you don't want to go back for it. So if you do need it later, yeah, absolutely. Okay. You got I'm, it. I'm totally clear on that. You know, we've been working here and making some changes. If, if, if the computer was to crash right now, would I lose all the things that we've been talking about? Nope. It auto saves every few seconds or so. So there is a save button in the top left-hand corner. Should you yes. click it, it will save your progress. And, and there is a lot of work that you can do here. So, um, it is a good idea to save that work, but if you don't and your whole computer just stops working, no big deal. It'll ask you the next time you log in if you want to um, uh, just pick up where you left off. Okay, so I, I, I noticed when you imported, uh, I guess with the LiDAR data, it actually knew how to assemble all the rooms together. Uh, so auto alignment is, um, it's, it is built into Stitch, but you rarely need it. So with the iGuide Planet system, um, it's going to auto align the data as you go. So something I didn't mention um, because it doesn't have to be part of your workflow here is that you can, you can move data around. So I hope you can see this on my screen. Right, well, you're moving a room. What, what would be an example of why I'd want to move a room outside of this space? Right. So let's suppose that you um, have a scenario where a property is not ready yet. It's not ideal. Like you don't want to show up at a house and have parts of it be inaccessible. It, it happens, to you. but Everything it's just like happens. that's life, okay. right? So, so let's <laughs> let's assume that I, I sh and I've had that. They you know yeah. they they they've showed up and and then they call you afterwards and say you know the real estate agent decided that the kids' room needed to be painted pink and, and, yeah. and instead of purple. Or or we're installing a new door here. Can you go shoot somewhere else? And you're like, yeah, okay. okay. So, so so here's okay. the scenario so visually. Happened. So so now what? So, you, so you, here's a piece of data that's not where it's supposed to be, okay? So th this is on me as the photographer. I have to remember that that data is not where it's supposed to be. But usually th those particular pieces of data are burned in your mind because they inconvenienced you. So in this scenario where I, uh, I you know, load this data into Stitch and I know this is out of place, I need to put it in place before I send it to the drafters. If I send it in like this, in all likelihood that there won't be a problem, they'll just fix it. But there's, you don't want to be taking that chance because um, on rare circumstances, data can be rejected if it's uh, messed up for some reason, which has very rarely, but occasionally happened. So um, I want to fix this before I send it in. And I do that by um, moving the data into place. And it's as simple as left click with my mouse and drag. And so I hope you guys can see this. I'm, yes. I'm moving the data with my mouse and right click and drag to rotate. So this is like putting together a puzzle. Um, you know, for some people it's easy, for some people it's hard. You know, I, there's lots of different ways. To have, 
have uh, Stitch do it for me. So there, I there is, yeah. So I'm glad you asked. So if I click on the button up here that looks like a sparkly magnet, mm -hmm. it just does it for me. I hope that was so fast. I hope that you saw that, but it basically just. I, I, I didn't, but I, I, I know there was a before and after. So yeah, here. So here's the before. And then if I click the magic button, there's the after it's in place. Cool. So uh, let me break it down because I'm, I'm, I'm still struggling with this. I, I think you've solved the two problems here for me. So the, the first is I go to shoot and I'm on the second floor, which has three bedrooms. One of them is a kid's bedroom. And that kid is, is not up, dressed out, and the room staged for me. So I got to skip that room and come back. Yep. So is, is that an example of where that room is? is 100%. Sorry, I'm nodding. Yep, you got it. So, um, and, you know, you go into oh, a, so that, a... So that means that... It, that the camera is not going to be able to auto stitch that because it's 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 shot later in the day and it really didn't know where to put it. it. So the funny thing is that it probably will know where to put it, but there's no guarantee when you're shooting um, really far out of order. So so the answer is absolutely. You know, you shoot the whole house and then instead of shooting that room, you skip it. To your point, what you just said, and then you go back and you get it maybe last. It, there's a higher probability that it won't be auto aligned. Now, in the in the iGuide app, can I just drag the room and put it in the right place? <laughs> yeah, you totally can. So unless you're in a big hurry, there's not really any excuse to arrange data here at all, um, because you can do, with well, one but, exception. But sometimes you're on site, and you know that you can just tell the the agent, the the homeowner, they're they're like you know, as soon as you can get out of here, please, please, please. Exactly. So, yeah. so you may not even take that moment, but if you have the time, you, you could come back later and later that in your shoot, shoot it. And if the iGUIDE Planix camera kit paired with the iGUIDE app didn't place the room in the correct place, I could take my finger, drag it into the right spot or close enough. And I imagine if I'm close enough, then in Stitch, it's going to finish the process of putting the room exactly in the right spot. You got it. Now, so this is this oh, is okay. an absolutely lovely process if you're if you're you know someone who wants to move fast on site because it means that if if things don't go smoothly when you're on site, no big deal. You can okay. just fix it so, here if you really want to. Got it. And then the other scenario I wanted to ask because this this has happened to me is we got to go back because they, they they literally have changed something in the house that's now different that they yeah. want to show and and that literally that could even happen a year later uh, yeah. oh yeah there's seasonal changes they change the carpet out in the hallway or something or yeah you know. so uh how do i get that uh, do, do i well first question do i need to be back in the original tour to do that oh no actually so that's super easy this is a common question that's a good one uh so let's suppose there's some update agent calls you or whoever and they say hey i need you to come back to the property and shoot something new and you say okay sure you go back you don't need to load up this data you could if you wanted to but that's overkill you just shoot exactly what you need and nothing else and then you just send it to the draft people and ask it to them to update it and they do it all for you they place it all properly and everything it's super easy oh you don't even need to go through this back end process all you have to do is basically loaded into the software. Like, you remember the first workflow, it's really fast. Like you don't even have to look at it. You basically load it in, yes. click export, that's it. You just have to create that file and send it to them, that's all. Okay, but if I wanted, let, let's say I, I shot it, I haven't yet ordered the iGuide, the, the agent told me on site that I was gonna have to come back over oh, three days yes, later and shoot it. So now I could still go, go back into the original app, but even if I didn't have the original uh, model because it was a year later, I can still have it annotated by the drafters. To, oh yeah. Yeah. To Here, I'll give out. you two examples. I, I shot, uh, uh, you know, units that are multi-unit. So you go to the first one, the tenant knows you're coming, they let you in, everything's fine. You go to the second one, doors locked, locks are changed. You can't get in. So you can't finish the tour until you get the second unit. Cause they're all the same building and that's what's being listed. So, okay. Maybe they'll be in this afternoon. So then you have to reschedule, you come back and yep, you open it up and you just, carry on just as though you had stopped shooting a few moments ago. Um, we've done a few that are much longer scale. So I shot a property once that was sort of before, during and after renovation. And I shot the property. I didn't process the data. I just held on to it. I came back six months later. I shot it with all the walls missing. Then I came back six to eight months later and I shot it fully renovated. And then I submitted it. Nothing wrong with that. 
you can totally do that. One of the nice things is that because the data is not stored on your, your smart device or anything, you can just keep the data around for as long as you like and do whatever you want with it. It's very flexible. It's just like having images on your computer. You know? Okay, awesome. I, I, I noticed that we're looking at a, a tour that's squared up. Is, there, is that important for any reason? So, you know, it's funny. Uh, the answer is not really. Um, so you can, you can do whatever you want. So you can have it slightly but, skewed. But why would I want it one way or the other? And then how are you making that, that orientation change? Does that affect the, how it's displayed on, on, I imagine it does that I, uh, sort of a little bit. Um, so to be honest, not really. <laughs> so there are conventions in place for how properties are displayed and they follow two basic rules for eye guides and you can request whatever you want, but if you don't say anything, this is what'll happen. Out of the front door will face toward the bottom of the screen. So it doesn't matter how you send it in. So just give you an example. If I sent it in slightly askew, yes, doesn't matter. The drafters are gonna just rotate, it takes them yes. one second, and they're yes. gonna point the front door toward the bottom of the screen. However, however, there, there is an interesting thing about eye guides in that they are, uh, they look a certain way. So you can see here that we have visuals that occupy the majority of the screen on the right, and then you have this you know, portrait style pane over here. So they'll often rotate the floor plan so that it just fits well in that white area on that sort of canvas, if you will. Um, and that's just a style thing. Like it just makes it better to look at when you're navigating. Okay, so it might be easier just for me to rotate it horizontally and have the front door just mentally while I'm working yeah. on it, but it's not necessary. It's not required. A lot of people like to square the data to the sides of the screen purely for their own just sanity. You know, okay. it looks better. <laughs> now, let, let's talk about it, it, image enhancement. What, what can I do to my panoramas? Good question. Okay. So at the top here, let's suppose I come across an image and I think, ah, oh, that's no good. That needs to be brighter, darker, whatever. I can click on the little wizard hat icon on the top uh, menu bar, mm -hmm. and I'm going to see this screen. So I hope you can see this. There's a big, huge image here. Yes. So this is the fully stitched you know, panorama um, in equirectangular format, missing the bottom and the top, but you don't need that for editing. Okay, so here I can change uh, highlights, brightness, contrast, saturate. So things I'm all used to as a, as a real estate photographer that I can change. You got and it. I, I imagine that I, you know, okay, so I, I slide it the way I want it. Uh, is how would I apply that to all the images? Uh, so there's two different ways. Uh, so if you look down here, there's a bunch of uh, buttons. Um, so it's very common for people to like a very specific thing, just a preset, basically. So you want all your images to be brighter than how the camera automatically makes them. So if you add brightness, you can then click copy. And then when you go to your next, oops, you go to your next panorama. So there's a button here that allows you to just quickly cycle to your next one. Yes. You can click paste and it will just automatically paste that so that's the first way, okay. you know, you've got I something that you're like, I did it to that all one. my images and that that's too long. So how, how do I do the, uh, uh, here are the presets I want to use for all my images in this job. Yep. So if you, if you, um, really, really like your adjustments, you know, you think I yes. always want to do this every time you can basically, um, choose a preset here under the presets drop down. So I, let's suppose I, I've got, I'll just do set one up there. Right. So these are pre-populated just says clipboard, set one and set two and set three. So okay. that just means you have four presets essentially. Um, and that's no one's ever asked for more. So that must be good enough. So if you do set one, for example, and I click save, it will save the current profile. Ah. And then I can click load and it will load it to this one or I can click. Um, okay. Could you just do something really extreme? Just push all, the <laughs> yeah, let's, all over the let's place. Add lots of contrast. It's just just so juice it up. There we go. That's, uh -huh. oh, that's save, save that as a preset. No, that's too Here much. Here we go. Uh -huh. Okay, Here we go. save it as a preset. All right, so okay. we'll go to the let's next. Lo let's load the next, let's get to the next one. This is this is some serious editing here. Okay. So if I click and load, it, you can see it just applies and, it. Um, and, it, and it just applied everything. Yep, you got it. Now, okay. what now most people how do I do, apply to all the images that, that horrible setting that we just did? <laughs> so, so actually, let me explain what I just did. So I closed that window. I clicked on the little screwdriver and wrench up here on the toolbar. Uh, and then I have an import option. So just like with Photoshop or Lightroom, I can choose to auto apply any of my presets on, on import. So if I'm loading up my data, I don't, I don't wanna have to go copy and paste and load or whatever, I just wanna do it. So I set it to automatically do set one on import. And now the next time I load it, 
it'll just automatically apply it to all ah, the so, Okay, so as a photographer, I, I typically make the same changes to every job as a starting point. So exactly. even when I import it, it automatically does my flavor of editing. Yeah, there's going to be a few where you know, you won't want it applied to everything. So for example, I always boost the saturation on outdoor panoramas. I find the Z1 is a little- uh, Okay, you know, so you might have a preset for outdoor, preset for indoor. Are there are other preset yeah. settings that- uh, Yeah, you got or it. Or pre exactly a preset right. for, for everything. Um, typically what people do is they have a, a, a certain look that they like, brighter, darker, more saturated, yeah. whatever. So they'll just apply that preset to everything all in one go. So, so we chose our auto adjustments in Stitch to be like good based on what we think looks good, but what people think looks good varies because they have different eyeballs and also they're in different markets. So um, your market probably will like, for example, more saturated photos or less saturated photos, but you'll just want to do the same adjustments to everything. So what you'll do is you'll just apply that one preset to everything and then you'll go through one by one and you'll make the changes that you already know you're going to make. So you'll go to outdoor panoramas and maybe boost it a little and, more. And then I might have a preset for my outdoors and then I'll, as I touch my outdoor images, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. People almost always have presets for outdoors when they have a lot of outdoor panoramas. There's no limit to the number you can have, right? So in California, for example, tons of outdoor panoramas. People do a lot. Okay. I'm in Canada. We have like one or two, you know, that's okay. very, it's so, they're, they're, I, uh, more I'm, rare. Chris, I'm confused on the preset where I, let's say if I go back to may, maybe one of the, the uh, editing, so I'm, I'm going back to the toolbar. Yeah, that's where, I, is that toolbar, is that correct? Oh, uh, yep, toolbar. So you're going to click the wizard hat oh, icon oh, okay. and it loads So up. let's say that I just want to add brightness of plus 10, whatever that is, to every image. Do I need to change any of my other settings? Uh, am I making them all zero so that when I import, the only thing I want to touch is brightness? Yeah, you got it. So basically it's relative. So anything that's added here is going to be copied um, uh, in terms of the value itself and then will be added onto the next one or subtracted depending on how you look at it. So what I would do is I would zero all these out. You're correct. And then I would add 10, click uh, copy or load to a preset. And then it would just apply that 10 brightness to all subsequent panoramas that the preset was loaded to. Okay, cool. Now I got the camera in the bathroom mirror. I couldn't avoid it no matter what I did. Where I, I needed the shot that's in front of the mirror. How do I yeah. get rid of the, as, as much as I, I like looking at the iGuide Planix camera kit, how do I get rid of the camera that's in the bathroom mirror? I thought I had one. I guess I don't. Okay, well, it, anyway, it's super easy. So it was designed... Um, so that you could remove it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend this is a bathroom or we're gonna pretend this water cooler over here is the camera. And we think to ourselves, oh gosh, why didn't I remove that? This scenario can happen with more than just a camera and a mirror though. There's a million reasons why you might wanna edit a panorama in Photoshop, but it's very simple. So I've identified that I wanna edit this. I'm gonna right click on the panel over here in that folder tree, the list on the left, and I'm gonna get some options. So one of them is open folder. If I do that, it just, I mean, you probably can't see this now because it's off screen, but it just opens up the folder in Windows. And that just shows me, you know, the data that I collected. So unlike some other systems, iGuide just shows you all the files. You can just do whatever you want with them. So what we have is the original JPEG that you can see on screen. It's just stored on my computer and I can just load it into Photoshop. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to switch screens and show you what I'm doing uh, real quick. So hold on one second. Um, Okay, now let me. So the only screen I, okay, thank you. Yeah, so I'm just going to switch to Photoshop. Okay. One second here. There we go. That worked for me. Okay, probably don't need a camera raw tutorial just now. So uh, this is Adobe Camera Raw. Um, I don't need to do anything here. Uh, but... too, too much detail. All I need to know is how, how to export my image and bring it back in because yeah. I, I know how to use my editing software, whatever software I use. So that, is that cool? Yeah, uh, okay. I'm not sure exactly what my computer's doing. Either way, load it into Photoshop, uh, let, Lightroom. Let, 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 let's do this. If you take me back to well, where did I find the image? And then once I make my changes, how do I swap out my image image that has been changed? All right, so let me- Is that cool? Whole, yeah, I'll just do my whole screen for a sec. Okay, can you see the the file explorer window? Yes, I see All right, desktop, I, it looks like the kitchen. 
So where is that file, that particular image? Good question. So if I right click and I choose open folder, what it does is it loads up the folder on my computer yeah. that all the data is in, which is what you're seeing right now. Yes. Contained within that folder for that particular panorama is a bunch of files, but the main one I want is this, which is called h1.jpg. Okay. And that is literally just the image. If I load that into Photoshop, monkey around with it, and then save it, all I have to do is come back to the software, right click and choose reload, and it will just reload the updated version. So that means that I can be in and out of the software and like, it takes like 30 seconds to get it into Photoshop, okay. edit it and get it back out again. So that it kind of begs two questions. First, do I need to keep the file name the same? Yeah, typically you wouldn't change it because um, in something like Photoshop, you would just click save and then it would say, do you want to overwrite? Lightroom's a little more complicated. Okay. You're going to have to export do, it. Do so you have, have an image that you could import so, just so we could we could see that process of replacing an image? Yeah, let's do it. Here, I don't care what the one. image is. Doesn't doesn't have to be the same image, just an image. Okay, so I, it's, Wait it's, for my computer it's, to and I'm in my edit software. I've exported that image. It's now on my desktop. Yeah, let's just let's just add it in. There we go. I have a big smiley face here. Let's give him okay. a nose for fun. Okay. Now I'm gonna click save. <laughs> We're fun. We're fun guys, right? Okay. So yes. I, so this I, is the tricky part that you alluded you know, to. I see the, the the face. I could say, oh, must have kids. <laughs> That's right. So I'm gonna click save, and it's gonna say, do you want to replace it? So I'm I'm gonna say yes. Okay. And when I do that, I'm gonna go back to Stitch, and hopefully you can see this. There's no change, obviously, right? So what I need to do is I need to right click and choose reload. And then <laughs> there you go. There's a happy awesome. face. Oh, okay, cool. That that that's all I needed to understand. Yeah. So the second part of the question, this says, even though I can edit all my images within iGuide Stitch, color, contrast, uh, uh, sharpness, whatever, whatever it is that I normally do in my workflow, if I'd rather work in Lightroom. Photoshop, some other software, I literally could, can I batch export and then batch import? So they're, they're almost, well, so no, the answer is no, unfortunately, um, unless there's some clever way that I don't know of, which is possible. Most of the time though, you wouldn't bother because Stitch does a really good job for like 99.9% .9 of the panoramas. So there's no need to batch import. Is export. the only reason is to remove an object? Well, there's, so removing objects, um, from mirrors is probably whoa, the vast majority. Um, however, there's all sorts of scenarios. So let's suppose you have a challenging lighting scenario where for some weird reason, there's a chandelier and they replaced one bulb with a CFL and the rest are LEDs. Yes. Those kind of challenging lighting scenarios require selective adjustments. So that's yes. not something Stitch can do. So, hey, Photoshop and Lightroom, or you know, you're shooting and you look over and you realize the agent is standing over there and their elbow is sticking out around a doorway or something. Yeah. And you think, oh my never, God, it would take me longer happened. to walk over there it's than it would happened. to just edit it out. It's edit never, it out. never happened. The, I would say that the, the best thing about being able to edit from like my perspective as a photographer was that I didn't have to worry so much when I was on site. Like, let's suppose I go to a bathroom and it's edge to edge mirror. Okay, that's not fun, but no big deal. I just shoot it and I think, okay, I'll edit the camera out later. So I don't have to fuss around with like figuring out where to hide it or whatever. I mean, you can certainly still do that, but you know, not having to worry so much means I could focus more on getting what I wanted, which is working with my clients and like getting the, the tour to look right and that kind of stuff. So that's nice. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just trying to think of other scenarios. I, uh, blur, do I need to export to blur? So very, very rarely, it really depends on the laws or the requirements of your client in your area. Um, so I've had people ask me for that. They say specifically, I need you to blur out all the family photos. Okay. Blurring is easy. It takes two seconds. Okay. So time. can I do that in iGuide Stitch or do I no, need to no, do so that that's, my so software? That, that was actually a much requested feature. So that may be coming in the future, but at the moment that's Photoshop only or Photoshop Lightroom. Okay. Um, that's there, fine. Can you, is there any other scenarios you can think of, of, of where we would need to ex export touch something up, import it back. Uh, we, we, we mentioned taking the camera out of the mirror, uh, the light bulb example, blur. Uh, tell you what, I'll just defer to photographers because they'll immediately, our viewers will know, oh yeah, I, I got reasons I need to swap it, yeah. out an image. It's exactly the same as when you're working with still images. You have these challenging scenarios that you need to spend more time working on. 
um, and Photoshop and Lightroom, it works right in your existing workflow. Like, so if you can use it on a still photo, you can use it on a, on a 360 in most yeah. cases. So uh, Chris, you, you went over hiding images. Uh, there, there's actually times where I need to delete an image because I can't take the risk that it's going to by <laughs> accident be seen by someone for yep. whatever reason. Oh yeah, security, privacy, absolutely. Can I, can, I, can I delete rather than just hide? You can, absolutely, yeah. So it is a button uh, or it's on the same little menu. If you right click, and you go down that little menu, there's a delete option as well. Delete is tricky though. You have to be very careful because it actually physically deletes it from like your hard drive, which is what you want, right? Um, but um, that often gets confused with hide. So sometimes okay. people will want to delete and they'll hide instead delete or vice versa. Means, delete means delete. Okay, yeah. our, our, our audience understands that. Uh, is there any reason that I want to reorder the images? So, uh, and, uh, uh, why? And I, I think the how is just to drag them. Correct. Yep. So the order from top to bottom of the panoramas is the same order that they were shot in. So that order is the order that they will auto play when you click the play button on the tour. Yes. So yeah, in a perfect world, you'd arrange them all. So they're ah, in, the, in the best. So order. I may not want that auto play to play the actual walkthrough. I, I might want to show the money shots and yeah. I got, I got, five money shots out of my 40 images, those are the ones I want up front, may not logically make sense in terms of a walkthrough, but if I only have the attention of somebody, that might be my bias of, of what images I want to play first. So I have control over that. Yeah, you have total control over that, yeah. Uh, uh, annotation, uh, where is that done? Uh, so by that you mean um, the... Uh, Annotation in terms, sorry, annotation. Um, I, I want to put some notes within the tour itself. <laughs> oh, tags. Sorry. Yeah. So if you want to add tags, um, you don't do that in Stitch, and you don't do that in um, in the survey app when you're shooting. You do that later after the tour is finished. So um, it's not outside the scope of this conversation. I could show you real quick if you want. Yeah, I, I think it's important enough. We should take a look at uh, at, at tags. So. Um, let me just load one up real quick here. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Let's find a property real fast. Nope, it's going away. There we go. Okay. And I, and I see tag editor. So I imagine you're clicking on tag editor. Yeah, it's not rocket science. You got it. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Everything's fairly well labeled. Let's just find a good one that has something that we can use. Sure, whatever this is. So yeah, you, you got it. You click tag editor. When you click that, um, you have the option of adding um, tags, whatever that may be. So if that's text, images, video, links, uh, you can put in whatever you like and add them in oh. three-dimensional space. Um, I can even show you. We can add one for fun. Okay. So I'll just put one on this painting over here and we'll call it um, painting. Sorry, I'm moving really fast. I don't want to run out of time that, here. That's perfectly fine. So there you go. There's now a weird little ball that hangs in the oh, surface okay. there and it so says painting. I, I can annotate, uh, go, go to the tags feature in the uh, iGUIDE content management system after the tour exists. You got it. Tags are, are popular. Um, they're usually used to identify in real estate features of note, you know, granite countertops yeah, and here's we, a beautiful uh, I Got it. I, I, I want to see if we can wrap up, but I'm, I still want to ask you, um, are there some shortcuts that of things that we haven't looked at that like would just make my life so much easier if I just knew these three things? Yeah, there are some, there's some, there's some tricks. Yeah. <laughs> so the first one I'll say is that um, the more work you can do on the front end, the less you have to do on the back end. So if you shoot correctly, that's much less work in Stitch. Um, in fact, almost no work. So every time I'm going to shoot something, like I'm going to place the camera and try to capture something, I'm going to point the front of the camera towards something that's like nice, you know, so then I don't have to configure the starting positions of any panoramas. As I'm shooting, ideally, I want to move through the home in an order that makes sense. So then I don't have to reorder my panoramas because I don't, need to do it if it's already done on site. And then um, while I'm shooting, I'm going to align my data if it doesn't automatically get aligned. So then when it gets brought into Stitch, it's just done. I don't need to do anything. So all I really have to do is just bring it into Stitch, 
I have a quick look through, make sure everything's good to go, and then I can export it and send it on. Um, in, so, well, I mean, I guess you could call that was three tricks, but we'll call that trick one. <laughs> Number two, I would say, um, would definitely be um, something along the lines of um, maybe taking advantage of the flexibility of the system. So sometimes when you're out shooting, uh, you don't need to do things the same way every time. People get into these habits where they just do the same thing over and over again. But this whole workflow is, is dynamic. So maybe, yeah, I don't have... As, all right, I have less time on the front end. So I'm at a site and the agent's just like, chop, chop, buddy, you got to get out of here. And the homeowner wants to get back in or whatever. So I can skip some of these steps and I can be, um, I can be a little confused about what floor is what or, or you know, some, maybe some of the images aren't perfect. Maybe the camera's in a mirror or two. And I don't have to worry. I can get all that stuff in stitch later. It's not a big deal. And then the third tip is that um, if there's ever an issue, you don't have to worry because you can always get back into the system later. And you can make a lot of the changes that, that we, I showed you in Stitch. So you can turn panoramas on and off after the eye guide's already published. You know, you don't have to do it on site or do it in Stitch. You can do it later too. Um, so often it's better just to get it in a form that's uploaded and then you can tweak it after the fact. Mm -hmm. is, is there, is, is there, are there any other shortcuts that would be helpful to, to know of you in using Stitch? Stitch itself, yes, absolutely. I didn't mention this. There are hotkeys. So there is a little button in Stitch in the top right-hand corner that's like a help button. And when you click it, it shows you all the hotkeys. Um, often people use Stitch for ages without knowing they're there, no matter how many times I tell them. And then when they find out, they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. So for example, you can tap the space bar and it will just auto-select the nearest thing to your mouse cursor. It doesn't sound like much, but it makes things go very, very quickly. It's really nice. Um, you can also tap the F key on your keyboard and it will select the whole floor. So you saw me do that earlier where I tapped it and everything turned green and I could okay. rotate cool. the whole so thing. So if you are typically a power user that likes to use uh, shortcuts, uh, there, there are many of those. Yeah, there are actually um, quite a few and they're based off a lot of habits power users have. So I didn't point it out because it wasn't relevant at the time, but when in the adjustment screen next to all the like sliders for you know contrast and brightness or whatever, there are numbers. So often people will recognize the number power users and they'll, they'll want to use keyboard inputs instead of using a slider. Now they don't want to use a slider. They want to put in 35 and that it gives you the ability to do that. You never have to use it if you don't want to, uh, but it's there for someone who's really, you know, picky. Okay. J just for clarification, there's not a bulk export of 360s. I have to look at each one to export them. Oh, no. Uh, well, so you mean multiple properties? Uh, no, uh, this, uh, I'm in. I'm, I just shot a house. It's got 35 panoramas. I'd like to to have all those panoramas downloaded. Oh yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to look at them at all. So it would be probably irresponsible to never look at your panoramas in a residential uh, real estate uh, scenario. Sorry, but sometimes, the, Chris, I'm not asking the right question. So let's say I do really want to edit all 35 images yep. in Lightroom. Is oh, there, you want to bulk bring them in the Lightroom? Yeah, that doesn't exist. Um, not yet. So it's just one image at a time. That's correct. So yeah. I can download all the 360s, all the equirectangular JPEG images, but I, I need to do it one image at a time. Yeah. So there is actually a trick to this. I'll tell you, but um, it's not as exciting as it sounds. So with uh, an eye guide, you can actually download all of the 360 images at once but you can only do it after the eye guide is processed. So we call them photospheres. And the reason that the function is available is that people like to use the 360 images for just stuff. Like they post them on Facebook or they put them in a different viewer, or put them on their website, whatever. So we give you that ability. So what you can technically do is just export it from Stitch without touching anything, send it in for processing. Then after it's processed, just download all the 360s just in one go, load them into Photoshop, or edit them, and then upload them um, back to the portal after the, the um, you've finished Raptors. uploading them and it's been processed. That's a little overkill, but people have used it for all sorts of weird stuff like AI sharpening and um, sort of stranger workflows, but that's not- Yeah, but I, 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 I wanna understand. So I, I think that that tip is awesome. I just wanna uh, clarify. So uh, if I go order the iGUIDE, then where do I download all the 360s in, in one shot? Is That's a good question. So they're in, they're in the deliverable. So essentially when you finish an eye guide, you get sent an email and in that email has a link that you can download them all with. Ah, the funny okay. thing is 
it wasn't designed for that. What it was designed for is when you get the phone call from one of your clients and they say, Hey, I just looked at the tour and it's amazing. You're doing great work, but there's like all this weird stuff on the dining room table in, and I, can you Photoshop that out? So you, what you do is you go back to the iGuide portal, you download the image, you Photoshop it out and you re-upload it again. So, um, you know, that was one image. I still want to just focus for a minute on all the images. Yeah. So there, so in, in the deliverable, there is a button where I can select download a zip file of all right. the 360 photos. Exactly right, yeah. Okay. Then uh, since the tour has already been processed, the floor plans already exist. I can substitute three uh, photo spheres all day long. That, yeah, exactly. There's no limit. You can go back and change them. Um, and that doesn't affect like. the drafting. There's no change in price that, and, and all I'm doing is substitute reload and then uh, export the whole the whole Megillah, the whole tour, again, export it from iGuide Stitch, then import it back uh, into, is there a, do I, do I say this is where it goes? Oh, yes. You showed, yeah. you showed us that. That was it, it matched up to say 301 Main Street. I need to make sure I'm uploading it again to 301 exactly. Main Street so I don't overwrite the wrong tour. I see the most common reason to do that isn't to do bulk editing. It's to do virtual staging. So when people have a vacant house, sometimes they'll just go download all the photospheres and they'll pick out a few like nice ones, like the living room or whatever. And then they'll just send that to a virtual stager and have them doctor them up and then they'll go add them back in. Awesome. But the way to do that is actually after the, uh, the eye guide has been ordered and the floor plan exists. Yeah. It's th that, I would say that's the easiest way for sure. There's actually another way. Um, to make things super complicated. So because the theta is shooting the JPEGs and you just have them right away, you can actually do any editing you want, not necessarily in bulk, but um, I mean, you have all the files, you can copy them, you can do whatever you like with them. So if you want to load them up all simultaneously into a Lightroom library, you have to go select them one by one, but um, it depends on how you define bulk. Like there's no way to go into the folder and select all the images in one go and click open, but you can go select them one by one. It depends on how many you have. Okay, obviously. so there's nothing proprietary about the file that's created from the Ricoh Theta Z1 camera as it makes its way onto the thumb drive, as it makes it onto the desktop. That's so right. Yeah, possible. they're just JPEGs. You can do whatever your, you like with them. If, uh, if you wanted your workflow to, to be... Uh, to do your your post production on the images or your virtual staging before you uploaded it to iGuide, you could. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. I I think even just that example, virtual staging. I I think that you know if there was a you know I would say one word, two words uh, for twenty twenty two for next year is virtual staging as an add on will be. Yep really a, a big thing uh, it's becoming so, more popular it makes sense right like you know fewer people at a home it's safer i mean we're still distancing yeah to a certain do you, degree do you want to tease us at all about a technology roadmap that has virtual staging integrated into the iGuide workflow do you want you want secret information about yes. our, what we're oh my god okay yeah, it's no, just you know, so, and I here, Chris. <laughs> nobody can hear this right so the uh um, so virtual staging is already something that we're, that we have as an, uh, it's not an option. We don't provide it, but we provide compatibility for it and it's baked in um, already. So you don't even have to, I don't have to tease it. It's already there. Um, but what it just means is compatibility with any system. What we found though, the challenge with virtual staging of 360s is that it's um, difficult to do uh, in a timely way. And it's difficult to find someone who will do it uh, for a, an appropriate cost. Everybody's got a different idea of how much this stuff will cost. I, I, I tell you, what, it's, it's a little bit outside of the, the scope of the <laughs> show. It fascinates me, I think. But just yeah, it's pretty cool. There, that there is a way to export all the images or to get them from the Rico Theta Z1 or to get them after the fact from the tour, pick out the images you want, do whatever you want with them. Uh, and up, upload it. Yeah. Uh, that that's awesome. Um, before uh, before we leave to go celebrate uh, Canada today, uh, it's our big day over here. Canada here? today. Uh, yes. Thank you for <laughs> taking your your holiday to be on the show today. Uh, before we kick off our July fourth uh, in the United States, uh, any 
any other 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 are there questions that I haven't asked you on this topic of eye guide stitching that are really important to to know? Have we well, have we covered everything? Or no, no, Dan. Here's here's some other things that we should talk about. I guess the, uh, we covered pretty much everything. I think the basic workflow is is there. You know, you take the data, you bring it into Stitch, you mess around with it, you send it in, it gets turned into a virtual tour. I think where people get confused. So we're going to bring it back to the original question, which is like. I'm a professional real estate photographer. I want to know about this process. Like how much time is this going to take me? If I buy a Planix camera, do I have to spend like, you know, four hours every night in the software? And the answer is no, not even close. Like um, the software is um, something that you can use to configure the tour before you send it in. And the reason it exists is that um, there are a lot of options on a tour that you may want to configure before it gets published. So if you just send the tour in without configuring anything, that means that if you have auto you know, delivery configured with the eye guide, which is a thing, um, it would get sent to your client before you've like, you know, configured it. So you don't want that. So Stitch gives you the option. You can configure it so that when you send it in, you, you're, you're done, which is fantastic. So I'll go shoot, for example, five houses in a day. And as soon as I upload them at whatever time, you know, my kids are in bed and I'm working away at the computer. So maybe it's 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Actually, my kid's like 9, 30, 10. But, you know, you send it in. Like I'm, I'm finished. I've configured them. They're all ready to go. I've edited whatever I need to. Um, so it's not so much that stitch is extra work that you need to do, which it gets a bad rap for that. Sometimes it just gives you some extra control. Should you want it, you know, should you need it? So that just gives you a lot of extra flexibility, uh, in that whole process from start to finish. Uh, I tend to overshoot. Is there anything <laughs> I guide stitch that would help me know that I actually have the the three sixties connected. Uh, I don't know how to ask you the question. Well, but. yeah. So you know, so you're not alone. Like a, a lot of people overshoot because it's safer, right? And you're always worried that you're going to have a call from someone later saying, "Hey, did you get a shot of that whatever looking into the whatever?" And you think, "Oh, I don't know." Um, I, so I'm thinking more like, "Oh, I tend to shoot five to seven feet, and, and maybe I'm going down a hallway, and it's just not necessary." But I want to make sure that in in post production that stitch knows that shot one connects to shot two. Oh, well, so that's uh, three, but I, I'm thinking that I tend to overshoot that. I'm imagining with the, with the eye guide uh, Planix camera kit and the LIDAR that if I'm going down a, a dull, boring hallway that I know I'll never want people to you know, walk step by step though. I want them to walk faster. How do I know in stitch that, oh, I really am way overshooting. Yeah, so that's, there's actually a, a really interesting technique. I'm getting a little advanced here, but I'll, I'll tell you, you what it is. You want to show so, us? Uh, yeah, I think I can actually. So oh. when, when you're shooting uh, any kind of virtual tour, is my mouse working? Here we go, share screen. So when you're shooting any kind of virtual tour, the question, especially when you first start, is how many of these panoramas do I need and which ones do I not need? Because each one represents a certain chunk of time that you have to invest when you're capturing. And if you can you know, shrink that amount of time on site can in theory, you know, um, make more money. So spending less time, making more money, it's whatever we want. So what you can do is you can actually see, hopefully my screen right now, you can see yes. the data. Okay. So if I were to select um, one of the panoramas down here, let me just make sure I've got one of them selected. There we go. Um, what I can do is I can actually see what data is associated with that panorama specifically. So you would imagine that if you were concerned about overshooting, you would look at this data and you would attempt to interpret it and evaluate whether or not any of these are superfluous or, or you know, overkill. Like, so I've got three panoramas in this living area. Do I really need three? Well, well let's find out. If I click- I, I'm used to looking at kind of a lot of data and you just have like one line of data. Is, yeah. Is, is, is well, it it's very simple to be honest. So if, if, you, if I were to pull out this one example, so here yeah. is one scan. It's just one, right? It's got a center point. So that represents where the camera was positioned. Yes. And then it's got lines surrounding it. So the eye guide camera scans with the LIDAR in a horizontal plane. So it's not 3D scanning the whole room. It's a common misconception. It's not doing that because we don't need that data. Draw floor plans, you just need to measure the length and the width of the room. It's more complicated than that because it does thousands of measurements. But this is what it looks like. The final you know, sort of end product of one scan is a bunch of weird dots and a camera position. So if you don't need that camera position, you can find out by just dragging it off the, you know, 
fully assembled blob of data there. And then if, if it's still recognizable as a floor plan, well, you didn't really need it. Often what happens is that people shoot their scans um, it becomes intuitive after a while. You have to think about it a bit at first. They Sorry, Chris, I, I'm confused. Can you show us one where you really do need it? And by removing the scan, something breaks? Yes, that's a good question. So here, so I'm going to pull, so it's funny. We don't even need most of these. So here's a scan where um, basically, no, I don't even need that one either. That's pretty funny. Oh, see, we got the data there. Okay, so, so here's, here's the living room that was scanned from the hallway. So I got all the front windows and from, what is this, the dining area? Yeah, and from the dining area. So I, I got the whole thing without even doing a scan in the living room. <laughs> so technically I didn't even need these, but here I'll pull one out that's, that's required. So here, I'm gonna pull this one away, which is funny. I didn't even need that one. I still got it. Well, that's, that's even funnier. Okay, I'll, I'll just pull when them all you said out. It, you didn't need it. You didn't need it for the drafter to create the Floor plan. That's exactly right. So but to I create might, a virtual tour, you still want need to, go to the see walking things. around experience. But if we just focused on, well, what does the drafter need? Is there if there is there one that you can remove and it it breaks it? Yeah, I can. How do I know that. that? There you go. Perfect. This is the one. So let me just zoom in a little. Okay. So this is a, a great example of a a room or a space with one scan because that was all it needed. So you can see. Hopefully, the green data here is it's a box. You know, it shows this space. If I pull it away, there's not enough information there in order for a drafts person to draw that box. They could probably do it because it's not rocket science. I don't important. know. I don't understand how you know that. Right. So this this is a this is a tricky part. So what we typically recommend is that people, when they're first start and they're first start interpreting this laser data, they just shoot one scan per space because that's that's all you need, and you don't have to think too much about it. But you can see, or well, rather, I'm sorry, I took you off. Well, that's okay. I'll just describe it. If you were to, let's say you were to shoot an entire house and you skipped a room, you just didn't go in there, there would be no data for that room. So there would be- uh, uh, Okay, so the, that square house, uh, a rectangle, it, it was missing a corner. So. Yeah, it would have like a, like a corner missing. And, and then the draft people would call you up and they, well, not literally, but they'd send you a message and say, hey, there's like a room missing, what happened? Um, so uh, in that scenario, um, you typically, you know, you're to your earlier question, it's not about missing a space because you'd already know you need to go into every space. It would be having more than one, if you're overshooting, you'd have well, more than you know, one scan I, in each space. I, I think you answered it just by showing that the scan data goes a long way. And so really in a house, if you have an exceedingly long hallway, just do the shot in front of each of the bedroom doors and you're, you're good. You yeah, absolutely, yeah. To, you don't have to worry about the in-between shots to get there because LIDAR sees really far. It's the range of the, the LIDAR is like obscene. It's like a full broad daylight. It'll measure like 60 plus feet. Like it's crazy. So um, often what happens is that you, the distance between scans and then you'll, you'll get a sense of that in stitch because you'll see all the little dots, right? Really has more to do with where you want people to see from in the tour. So if you want them to be in the living room, well, yeah, of course you scan that yeah, in a hallway. I mean, it's like, you don't really care that really much. Right? Shooting what I would call in between scans in order to be able to have one connect to the other to connect to the other. But the, the LIDAR uh, on the iGUIDE Planix camera kit sees so far that I, in a house, I don't even need to worry about it as, as long as I got the camera seeing line of sight, even if that run in the very long hallway on the second level of the house is super long. Just put this, just do my shots in front of the bedrooms and I'll be fine. I would say that's true. Yes. Line of sight. Okay. Uh, uh, any parting last thought? Uh, no, I think we covered everything. I think that was really great. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad we got a chance to discuss stitch stitch is really interesting and fascinating software. And it brings up a lot of, um, you know, uh, it answers a lot of questions when you get into the software because you actually see sort of the magic behind all the technology. Like, what is it really doing? Sometimes with certain technologies, it's very hard to know what's going on. Like, what is it doing? Is it scanning? Is it photographing? But in this case, you, you see the image. It's very transparent. You see the actual LiDAR data, and then you see the connection between them. So I didn't show it, but the, um, in the image, there's a simulated laser line that runs horizontally across the image. And that is the um, place where the laser like hit the LIDAR. So you can actually see what it is that you measured in the data. 
So the, I mean, you probably noticed the data is like, you know, it's kind of wiggly and ugly and weird looking, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfect, perfectly acceptable because you can identify what is structure, like what's a wall versus what's a potted plant or an appliance or whatever. Yeah, that, the... you know, that was totally clear to me. I, oh, you know, good. I, That's I, <laughs> my takeaway is three things. One, it's uh, using iGUIDE Stitch post-production software for PC and Mac. If you do a really good job sh shooting on the front end, it is super fast workflow on the back end it is, yeah. to upload the project to create an iGUIDE. Second, uh, if you have some reasonable amount of workflow that you want to do in terms of setting the start image, perhaps changing some of the order of the panoramas for the autoplay tour, if you want to change the um, uh, so, some color correction on, on one or more panoramas. It's super easy. And if you have a workflow where you typically apply the, the same settings to all images, then that's there. So even, even your typical workflow on a job is still relatively short. And, and then third, there's probably a bell or whistle for a feature that you think you'd want if you needed it. And we did a couple of those examples, such as uh, exporting a photo sphere so that you could take the camera out of the mirror or export to do virtual staging and import it back. So uh, I, awesome. Chris, thanks for being on the show today again. Thanks for having me. We've been busy. Happy Canada today. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, uh, we've been visiting with uh, Chris White, man uh, marketing manager of Planetar Inc. Uh, Planetar is the maker of iGUIDE. Uh, if you have follow-up questions, uh, www.goiguide.com. Uh, lots of help videos, support tools, et cetera. You can also book a appointment with one of the sales team members. Uh, uh, Chris is active in the We Get Around Network Forum, WGANforum.com. And uh, Chris is at, in the forum, is in, in the WGAN forum, is at Chris underscore iGUIDE. Uh, for uh, Chris in the greater Kitchener, Canada area, who is off to celebrate the remains of Canada today, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum in Atlanta, getting ready to celebrate the July 4th holiday weekend. Thank you all for tuning in. You've been watching WGAN-TV live at 5.